Good morning, everyone. Um, just to uh, mention something that I mentioned on, I guess now it was Monday, um, we do have our first exam on the 28th, which would be a week from this coming Monday. And um, we're going to stick with that schedule. Uh, so next week we will um, spend um, uh, covering uh, chapter, the rest of chapter four that I don't cover today. We'll start on chapter five. We'll do some more stuff in Python. We'll do some review on Friday. But I think the best thing you can do to prepare for that exam is to just make sure you're um, staying up with the lectures, staying up with in-class assignments, um, and you can expect that the in-class exam, or I'm sorry, that the the first exam, it won't be in class, it will be a take home exam similar to what we did for the quiz. And so uh, if you did okay with uh, the, the quiz or if you felt like you've done okay because they haven't seen your grade yet, um, then you should be just fine. If not, um, please let me know if I can help or um, make sure that, that you're staying up, again, staying up with the reading, staying up with the lecture material. Um, so uh, I want to start on chapter four today, and uh, let me get that started. And we want to talk about chapter four uh, covers two really important concepts uh, when we are talking about uh, data analysis or statistics. And um, you're familiar with, with, with both of these, maybe not in the same detail that we're going to cover, but they're not, I don't well, I'm certain they're not foreign concepts uh, uh, to you. Uh, and so they're central tendency and variability. And so you remember from uh, our lecture, um, maybe a week ago today, um, uh, maybe, or maybe it was last Wednesday, we had this uh, graphic and we call this a histogram. And this just shows uh, some number, there's a count on the, on the vertical axis, and each of these bars represent the number of people who had um, some amount of steps uh, uh, during um, this collection period. And so this is a distribution of data, we, could, we, we would call that. And this distribution of data has a center point, you know, a, a, a measure of central or some central tendency where, where are most people in terms of, from the sample anyway, where are most people in terms of the steps they take? So it has a, a center point or points, and it also has um, some variability, that is how spread out is the, um, how spread out is the, um, let me get um, the, yeah, how spread out is the data, and red always makes me nervous, so. Let me see if I can change this to blue. Um, and so, um, so there's a center point in the data or the distribution, and then there's how spread out is the data. And those are the two concepts that we want to talk about. Um, another distribution of data that we looked at the other day. Likewise, there's, there's some center point here. Um, and, and that center point may be influenced by this long tail that we have here. And remember that we would say that this distribution is positively skewed because the tail uh, goes off in the high direction of the data with most of the values on the, on the low side. Um, and so it, it still has a, a center point and it also has some uh, degree of um, variability, how spread out is the data. And so again, those are the two concepts that we're going to cover in, in chapter four. And they're, they're, they're critical for just even elementary uh, level um, uh, understanding of data. Where is the center point and how spread out is the data? It would be two questions that, that would almost always get asked uh, initially when we're looking at when we're looking at data. So central tendency uh, is um, is the arithmetic mean, median, and mode. And so and I, I've essentially mentioned this first point already that 
tendency and variability, or central tendency and variability, are two characteristics of the distribution. And so we have um, we have uh, mean, median, and mode. Some people call it average. Some people call it mean. I don't. I've never read anything. Both of them are mathematically the same. Um, I tend to use them uh, interchangeably. And and this and so I want to talk about the mean first, and then we'll talk about median, and then we'll talk about mode, and then there will be a, a some in class assign an in class assignment from your textbook where you'll calculate mean, median, and mode for a couple sets of data. So this is the formula for average or mean, and oftentimes we'll um, abbreviate mean with this x and a bar over top of it. So some people might actually say, instead of mean, they might say, what is your x bar? Um, I don't tend to use that language, but some people use that language. Um, and, and so the formula for a mean, as we know, we sum up all of our x's and we divide by n. And so this is the same sum summation notation that we've used previously. The difference here is um, we just simplify things a little bit for us. When we sum up all of the scores, we just drop the i is equal to 1 to n on the top. It's just easier to make things a little clearer. And in, in most every case, that is, the, that is what we're doing. So you can, you can think of this summation if there's no uh, notation below it or no notation above it. Think of it as i is equal to 1 through n. So i is equal to 1 through n. We're going to sum up all of our x's, and then we're going to divide by n. And you know that. You, you all can calculate um, the, the mean. Um, the formula that I have here, same formula, different. Um, this is mu instead of, the, um, instead of x bar. And I just want to talk about this for a minute, and your textbook will make a bigger deal out of this than, than I make of it, and I'll tell you why I don't make a big deal out of it. So this is the formula for mean if we're working with a population of data. This is the formula for a mean if we're working with a sample of data. So as you can see, the formula is the same, right? We sum up all of the x's and we divide by, in this case, the, um, the count of the, the n for the population. In this case, we're dividing by the n for the sample. And so it, it's, it's useful, um, might be more useful in some other more advanced classes than, the, than our class um, to distinguish between how we calculate statistics for a sample and how we calculate statistics for a mean. But for our purposes, because we almost are always working with samples, uh, we'll focus on that. And, and so as you look through, as you look through the, the, as you read the textbook and look through it, you'll see that the textbook author spends more time on that than I am. Not that it's not important for me, but it's just something that um, I choose to focus on on some other on some other details. And so I just wanted to point that out. So this is the formula that, that we'll be working with. And by the way, I haven't said this yet in class, but um, and, and as you know, the the um, the exams and the quizzes will be open book and uh, take home. So you don't have to memorize formulas. There's really no value in that. And this is a pre we we don't we all know this formula we don't we don't really have to memorize it but there's some other formulas that we'll see as we go that you that you will not be familiar with and um, and it's it's just not useful from my perspective to have you memorize formulas uh, so even if we were taking an in class exam I would give you a formula sheet that you would you'd be able to use um, because in the real world. If you need one of the formulas that we're going to talk about, you could just Google or grab your textbook and you could get that formula. And, and that's the way that, that, that everybody would do it in the real world. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, some characteristics of the mean. And these are there's some detail here that's really important and will help us as we start talking about variability as well. 
So the mean is sensitive to the values of all scores in the distribution. If we change any one of the scores, the mean will change, right? And we know that from this formula, right? Because we're summing up, we're summing up all of the, the, the XIs. And so if we remove one of the XIs and replace it with another value, we are going to get a different, um, we're going to get a different mean. Um, and so um, that, that same characteristic doesn't apply for the median and the mode. So the mean is sensitive to the values of all of the scores in the, in the distribution. And that has some benefit, but it also, like many things, has a, 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 um, a downside, I guess we could call it, that, that we, we also need to be aware of. And we'll talk about that moving forward. Um, this particular characteristic is something that will come up when we talk about variability. The sum of the differences of each score or observation from the mean is always equal to exactly zero. So here is summation notation that we should be familiar with. Uh, if we take each x minus the mean of x and we sum those all up, uh, and we don't have rounding error, they will sum to exactly zero. And um, that's important for, for a couple reasons, and we'll, we'll talk about that more as we move forward. But uh, to demonstrate that, this is from your textbook, page 82, at least in the, the, um, the edition of the textbook I have. So it's, I'm demonstrating here that the sum of each xi minus x bar, or the mean, is equal to uh, exactly zero. So here's our xi's, for example. We sum those up, right? That notation should now be somewhat familiar. If you see this, okay, we're just going to sum up all of the x's. We sum up this column of numbers, we get 30. And then if we want to calculate the, the x bar, or the mean, it's just um, 30 divided by 5, our, our n, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 30 divided by 5 gives us an average of 6. And 2, and so this column here, is xi minus x bar. It's, it's this part that's in parentheses. So 2, right, xi is the first, that's x1, minus 6 is, of course, minus 4. 4 minus 6 is minus 2. And you can see that um, 6 minus 6, of course, is 0. And we do that math, and we sum up this column, and that will always sum to 0. One of the reasons why this is useful is if we don't have any other, um, if we don't have any other uh, information about um, the, the, the data that we're working with, the uh, uh, the characteristics of the sample that we're working with. If we guess the mean as the score for any case that we would draw from the distribution, on average, the amount of error would be zero. And so why this is important is, again, if we have no additional information about the sample or where our data is coming from, um, and we need to predict or we want to forecast what somebody's score is, our best guess would always be just to use the mean. Um, because on average, um, the errors will cancel out. Some people are going to be above, some people are going to be below, but in aggregate, on average, that error is going to sum to, to zero. So you need to study this particular table and make sure you understand how to do this math. And um, it will likely be something that you'll see. Well, it'll be something that you'll see when we talk about variability, but it's likely something that you'll see on the next exam as well. Uh, so the third characteristic is, and we know this already, that the mean is sensitive to extreme scores. So let's say we have this set of data with three, four, six, and seven. Uh, the mean is 5, right? And, and so that, that measure, that 5, seems that represents sort of the middle point of that data pretty well. But if we add one extreme score in there, we, um, you know, 8.3 doesn't represent nearly as well the, the middle of that data as, as the 5 does. Um, 
And so the mean is sensitive to extreme scores. So one thing that, um, and there's a textbook, or one of the, the problems that you're going to work from the textbook today uh, is a question that asks you what's the best measure of central tendency. And the way that you would determine that is if there's no extreme scores, you know, something like this, then the mean is the better measure of central tendency. If there are extreme scores, then the mean probably isn't the best measure of the center. We'd be better off using the median. And we'll talk about median he here in just a, a few minutes. And so um, just keep that in mind. And, and we, we, we all know this uh, uh, already. And um, for this re reason, for a lot of things, the median is just almost always used. For example, salary data. Uh, with that histogram that we looked at earlier, that was um, salary, we wouldn't use the average to give us the central tendency of this data. We would probably be better off using the median or at least give users or whoever's consuming the information both the average and the median. But the better measure of the central tendency here would be the median because all of these high salaries that we have here are making our average larger, uh, inflating it, and it doesn't, again, not representing um, the, the, the central tendency. Um, similar to what I have here where we have this 20 that is, is, is sort of out on the, the, the tail of the distribution. So that's characteristic three, that the mean is sensitive to extreme scores. Uh, the fourth characteristic, uh, another um, summation that we have to look at, uh, this one will also come up uh, 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 more frequently or, or uh, as we talk about variability as well and also throughout the semester. The sum of the squared differences of all of the scores from the mean is always a minimum. And so I'll demonstrate this on the next slide. Um, and, and the math is, 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 is really straightforward, but it's, it's important to remember this, that the sum of the squared differences of all of the scores from the mean is a minimum. So if we sum up xi minus x bar, and then we square that, so we for each xi, we, we, um, we take the difference from the mean, we square, and then we do, we do that for all of the xi's. Um, this, this parentheses, if this parentheses was out here, we would just square once. But this parentheses is here, so we're going to, for each for the, each of the differences, we're going to do a square. And that, um, that, is, uh, that is a minimum, and um, we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that in just a second. And so um, there's no other value that we could use instead of the mean to give us a lower sum total. If we were to use some value other than the mean, we would always get a higher value. If we use a lower number or a higher number and we did the same math, uh, we'd always get we'd always get a higher number than just using the mean. So to demonstrate this, um, the average, the x bar is um, the sum of this column, which is thirty five, divided by five, which is seven. Right, so uh, that part's easy, and then um, the um, uh, these are our xi's. This is the math where we're just doing xi minus x bar. We already know that this sums to zero, as uh, as the previous characteristic, uh, or or I think it was characteristic two indicated. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, characteristic two. Uh, we already talked about this. Um, that always sums to zero. And then this is just squaring each of these values. So minus 1 squared, of course, is 1, 0, 4, 16, 9, and 30. So uh, if I ask you to calculate this, I would expect you to get a 30. And if we were to change the 7 that we're using um, here to any other value, we would always get a higher 
value here. And, um, and so that, that that's just a characteristic of, of the mean. And it's, it's, it's useful. It'll be, it'll be useful as we, as we progress through the semester, but it's particularly useful in more advanced applications of statistics. But it's one that I want you to be uh, familiar with for, for what we're doing here. Uh, the fifth and final characteristic of the mean is that under most circumstances, of the measures of central tendency that we're going to talk about, which are mean, median, and mode, the mean is least subject to sampling variation. So let me explain um, uh, this uh, idea of sampling uh, variation. Um, in the real world, we would likely um, um, be drawing a sample of data from some population and um, we would likely only do that once, right? We, we have some study that we want to do, some data that we want to collect, and we would um, take a sample from the population and, um, and we would um, uh, use that to represent the population. Um, but of course, if we drew multiple samples from the same population, we would expect that they would not all be equal. So for instance, let's say our class is the population of data, is the population of interest. And let's say the, the, the um, variable of interest is um, how many steps you walked uh, yesterday. And if I take a random sample of 15 people from our class, ask them how many steps they walked, and then calculated an average. And then I drew another random sample, put everybody back in the population, drew another random sample, calculated another average. Um, it's, it's really unlikely that those two averages will be exactly the same. It's almost never going to happen in the real world where we have a large enough data set. Um, and again, if I drew a third sample from the population, um, put everybody back, put everybody back in the population, take a random 15 uh, students from our class, find out how many steps you walked yesterday, and um, calculate an average, it's going to be different than the, the, the first two. What characteristic five says is that the mean will have the least amount of variation. If we did the same thing with the median or the mode, it would tend to um, move uh, uh, all over the place, particularly the mode, the median more than the mean. But the mean would be at least reasonably stable, um, not completely so, it won't be exactly equal, but it will be um, it will be least subject to sampling variation. Um, so that concept is is useful uh, to 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 keep in mind as well. And so uh, this final slide essentially just says the the same couple points uh, make the same couple points that that I made on the previous slide. So let's switch our ge switch gears to the median and. Um, I assume that you know this as well, but if you don't, uh, just like uh, uh, mean, we're going to talk about how to calculate it. So the median is the score corresponding to the middle observation when all of the cases are arranged in order, either in descending or ascending order. It doesn't matter how you arrange them in order. They just have to be either from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. It doesn't matter. Um, and, and so it's the, the score that's in the middle of, 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 that, uh, of those arranged scores. Uh, that is, it's the score that divides the cases or the observations or the XIs into equal frequencies. So if we have a raw, if we're looking at, uh, you know, raw scores, uh, our data, where the N is odd, and so the word raw there probably doesn't, the word raw really doesn't need to be there, but um, it, it is. So we could just say for scores or for data where the N is odd, 
um, the median is going to be the score at position n plus 1 divided by 2. Of course, we have to have all of the scores arranged in order. And we'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate this in just a second if this n plus 1 divided by 2 doesn't quite make sense yet. Um, likewise, if the n is even, we need the, the median is equal to the score um, value because it's not a, it's not a it's not one score it's it's a value a combination of two scores midway between the score up position n divided by two and n divided by two plus one and again I'll sh I'll demonstrate this and you, you'll, you'll this will make sense um, when, when you see it and of course again we have to have all scores arranged in order so usually when I give you data and tell you to calculate the median median they won't be in order you'll have to take that step to put them in order or none of this none of this will work for you um, and so an example here um, then the n is odd right we have seven cases and this is the the so-called uh, raw data and this is the data that I've uh, organized from low to high and um, the median is the score at the position n7 plus 1, 8, divided by 2, of course, is 4. And so um, in the fourth position, 1, 2, 3, 4, is our median. So our median for this, for, for this data is 6. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So n is 7, plus 1 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. We count to the fourth position, and we get um, the the uh, the median value. It's the score that there's an equal number of frequencies below it. There's an equal number of data points, or the frequency of data points is is equal below it and above it. Right? There's three scores below it. There's three scores above it. Um, if we have an even number of cases, uh, it's not much more complicated. Um, it's the score that is um, the midway point between positions n divided by 2, so 8 divided by 2, uh, 4 again, and uh, 4 plus 1 is, of course, 5. And so this is our raw data. This is our data that is organized uh, from low to high. We're just going to go to um, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 4 plus 1 is um, the fifth position. And so our median is essentially the average of these two scores. So 6 plus 10 divided by 2, that's what our n is, right? We just have two scores. The median is equal to 8. So make sure you can calculate, and you'll, you'll have a chance to do this, uh, the median with both uh, an odd number of cases and an even number of cases. So a couple characteristics of the median, and these will go a little bit faster. The median is less sensitive to extreme scores, same data that we looked at earlier. And in this case, the median is actually, the center point is actually the same, even though we have this, this 20 that, that we have on this set of data, which um, inflated the, the average or the mean, as, as you might recall. So with extreme scores, as I mentioned earlier, um, the median um, is just about always uh, a better measure of cent cent central tendency. And um, what you probably want to do is give both the average and the median, as I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, that's what most users or consumers probably would, would prefer. Um, the second characteristic is under usual circumstances, the median is more subject to sampling variability than the mean, as I talked about earlier, but less subject to that variability than the mode. So it's it's if we are drawing right random samples from a population, um, the the mean is going to be the most stable. There'll be the least variability in the different means that we calculate with um, with the um, mode. Uh, there will be the most, and the median is in the middle. Um, so then, th just those two characteristics. So the mode is just the most frequent score in the distribution. 
And so we can have data that has just a single modal value, or we can have data that we might call bimodal, or there might be data that we might just say is multimodal because there might be more than two modes, and we could just call it um, multimodal. And so here's a histogram from your textbook, uh, just uh, you know, similar to the histograms that we've looked at already, where we have some scores on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, we have some frequency. And whatever this value is here, that would be our mode, because it's the value that we know occurs most frequently, right? Because the frequency uh, is, is indicated on this, um, on the, the vertical axis. And so um, single mode, unimodal value. Here, of course, we have two modes uh, that, um, that would make it unimodal. We could have three modes, and we probably wouldn't, where we have three values where the frequency is all the same, we probably would call it, um, we would probably call that multimodal. And so this, this looks very much like a normal distribution of data here, if we think about the normal curve, which we'll talk about quite a bit in this semester. Uh, but this doesn't, right? This just has a, a look to it that, um, that, that makes it, uh, you know, this part's kind of normal, and this part's kind of normal, but they're, they're, two, they're shoved together. So it is, it's, it's just a, a characteristic uh, that oftentimes you encounter when you're looking with working with data. And so um, the characteristic of number one, the first characteristic, and I think there's just two here, um, if we were drawing random samples from a population, the mode just wouldn't be dependable at all. And um, if we had time to do this in class, I could write a couple, co a couple lines of Python code that drew random samples for us and we could calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. And you'd clearly, we'd clearly be able to see that the, the, the mode um, would, would sort of uh, bounce all over the place if we do random samples from the same population. And the, the average would, would do that, uh, or the mean would do that uh, much less. And then the <clears throat> final characteristic of the mode is that um, of all of the measures of central tendency that we use so far, it's the only one that we'd be able to use with nominal level data. And so remember, nominal level data is the idea in name only. And so we just have frequency counts. And so if we had um, favorite soft drink uh, as a, a, a variable, uh, and we just had people tell us what their favorite soft drink was, and then we put that together in some kind of frequency distribution or frequency table, and some number of people have Coca as their favorite beverage, and some people have Gatorade, and some people have water, or whatever, whatever the, the different um, uh, favorite beverages would be, there would be a modal value there, right? Whatever, whatever beverage was um, preferred most frequently would be the, the modal value. And we, it would make no sense to, to calculate an average with nominal data or, um, or a median with nominal data. So um, here's the in-class assignment uh, that you need to work on. There'll be a, um, a, an assignment uh, set up uh, for you to drop this into. Um, you can take do it hand. Um, you have to show me all of your work. Um, and you can do it by hand. You'll need a calculator in all likelihood. Uh, I, I would suggest using a calculator. Um, but it's 96 and 97 from the edition of the textbook I have. Problems 16, 21, and 27. And then just note, for problem 27, it wants you to calculate range and standard deviation. Ignore that and just calculate the mean, median, and mode. The same thing that you're going to do for um, the data that you see in problem 16. Um, and so um, 16 and 27 essentially have the, use the same instructions, even though question 27 will ask you to calculate something else. Don't do that. Calculate um, the mean, median, and mode instead. So I'll see you uh, on Monday in class, and we will continue to talk about Chapter 4 then.